Hello guys, my name is Darius and today I'm going to show you the top 5 luxury sedans you can drive on a highway. Let's go! First of all, let's make some rules. When I'm thinking about cruising on a highway, I'm thinking about an E-Class or maybe an A6. In other words, a mid-size sedan with an engine displacement of over 2 liters. Even if here in Europe we still use V6s or inline 6 diesel engine. Yeah, we just love torque. Let's say the 2 liters is the lowest displacement. If you want to check the top with diesel cars, it should be on this channel. If it's not, then subscribe and uh, you will be among the first one who will watch this. Therefore, we need a car that uh, everyone can cruise in comfort for over 600 kilometers. Why am I saying that? Well, that's the average length I drive when I'm leaving town. How many kilometers do you drive uh, on average on the highway? And do you think the hybrid car is the best for this job? Write down below your answer because your opinion counts a lot. We have one more step before starting. I'm going to present you the five competitors after that, I will enumerate them from bottom to top in order to sort and give them grades for each car based on their look, engine performance, tech, seat comfort, trunk space, fuel efficiency, and last but not least, the price tag. The first car I'm going to present is the Lexus ES300H. Starting from around 57,000 euros, it's quite expensive for what it is. Personally, I think that the exterior design is better than the other ones, but the interior, it's more sober. Well, you can get anything you want from ventilated seats to adaptive cruise control. You can configure your car by yourself and see which configuration suits you better. But unlike the other brands, I think that the tech is from the early 2010. I think that the infotainment is really outdated. I can say that they have comfortable seats with good quality leather and you will enjoy your ride without back pain. Even though it has a wide open, the trunk is only 450 liters of space. The ES has a reliable, naturally aspirated 2.5 liter C94 gasoline engine, which produces 178 horsepower, but combined with the electric motor has 218 horsepower. The gearbox is a classic Toyota eCVT. It, it's worth to mention that it's a front-wheel drive car, it's not a plug-in and it has only 1.3 kilowatt hour of battery. So you can drive in EV, but just in the city for uh, short distances. Average highway consumption at 130 kph, of course, is between 7 to 7.5 liters, so I think that it's decent. As you can see, these types of uh, car are more economical than a traditional car on national roads or in the city. Re Real drive BMW 530e has a sporty look and I associate this car to a young entrepreneur because it's packed with technology and sporty. The base price of the 530e is 60,000 euros. It uh, basically is a 2 liter turbocharged inline 4 engine which produces 184 horsepower. And uh, with the aid of the electric engine, you can get uh, about 292 horsepower. The battery is uh, about 10 times bigger than the one offered in the ES. So, from the 12 kilowatt hour battery, you can get around 55 kilometers of range in pure EV mode. From the 5 series you can get another two options. The first one is the 520e with the same engine but, but is detuned to 204 horsepower combined and the second one is a more powerful inline 6 3 liter gasoline engine which produces with the help of the electric motor 394 horsepower. All the models share the same 12 kilowatt hour battery. The interior is a bit outdated, but uh, it's better than the Lexus and the Audi. It looks and feels more luxurious and it's comfortable. You have lots of headspace and uh, you're feeling that you're driving a big car. That's because you drive it. <laughs> the iDrive is currently the second most practical infotainment system, in my opinion, of course. 
so you won't have the laggy screen user syndrome. The exterior looks fine, but I can say that the preface lift looked better. What do you think about this? Tell me more in the comment section. Finally, the trunk, which is not so great, uh, but uh, 410 liters will be more than enough for business trip or a vacation if you have a three, four member family. I will later make a video about this. The Mercedes E-Class or the Mercedes E-Class. You can get a rear wheel drive a 300E or a 300DE. But because the diesel engine will perform better on the highway, I will choose it in this top list. Powertrain is composed from a classic 2 liter inline 4 diesel engine which produces 194 horsepower and 122 horsepower from the electric motor. Combined, it has 306 horsepower. Well, the Merc is still uh, the king of the interiors, but the exterior isn't as beautiful as the competitors. With Merc's big infotainment and the cockpit, you are thinking that uh, you are in a spaceship, not a car. But uh, I can say that uh, any extra option is expensive, so starting from 60,000 euros, you can add the premium plus package that costs about uh, 9,000 euros and you will get everything from the 3D Burmester sound system to the panoramic roof. So it's like driving an S-Class. Yes, the Mercedes is quite expensive, but the 300E, the main competitor of the other two, starts from 62,000 euros. The boot capacity, I think that it's awful. Even my coupe has a bigger trunk space. It only has 370 liters and uh, has 170 liters less than the E300D. The highway consumption ranges from 5.6 to 6.2 liters per 100 km. The Audi A6, well, it has the most rectangular design. Yes, the BMW has it too, but it seems like this design suits better the Beamer. My opinion is that the previous generation Audi A6 looked better. This generation has a nice interior, it doesn't look as special as the Mercs, but it definitely has good quality material and overall I think that this car is suited for, let's say, minimalist people. I like this uh, less is more design. It doesn't show off or scream attention like a Tango Red Day 7. The 2 liter inline 4 gas engine produces 299 horsepower in combination with the electric motor. It is coupled to a 7-speed S-Tronic gearbox and of course it has quattro all-wheel drive system and it will cost you from around 61,000 euros. The average highway consumption is from 7.5 to 8.1 liters. Audi has the smallest trunk with uh, 360 liters, is the size of a Polo, so you need to choose only the important things you want to bring in your summer vacation. I can tell you that you won't navigate the Mediterranean Sea with your inflatable crocodile anymore. <laughs> well, if you're tired about German engineering, then you should try the Italian one. Maserati brought us a hybrid version of the Ghibli, which has a 2-liter inline-4 gas engine and produces, combined with the electric engine, 330 horsepower. It's the slowest Ghibli, bringing us to 100 km per hour in 5.7 seconds. The rear wheel drive Italian stallion, it's really beautiful. I mean, who doesn't like Italian design? The infotainment is pretty good, runs smoothly, but the cockpit is still traditional. I don't mind it, but the German competitors have a digital one and this trend will never bring us back to the beautiful analog cockpit. The interior is really qualitative. It's like you're sailing in a Italian speedboat on the way to Venice. At 500 liters, the trunk capacity is really good, although the load area is shallow. This luxury sedan averages from 7.6 liters to 8.9 liters per 100 kilometers at highway speeds, but you will be unique because Maseratis are rare, but I don't know why. Maybe the price is the answer because it starts from about 72,000 euros. As this being said, Let's make the list. The number five, it's the Audi. Yeah, I'm sad about this, but uh, yeah, it's the Audi. It gets uh, an eight for the looks, a nine for the engine performance, an eight for the tech, 
an 8 for the seat comfort, a 5 for the trunk space because it's the smallest, a 6 for the fuel efficiency and a 7 for the price. So it gets 51 out of 70. The BMW is uh, on number 4 with 8 on the look, 8 on the engine performance, 8 technology, 7 at uh, seat comfort, 7 at trunk space, 7 at fuel efficiency and 7 at price. So it has a total of 52 out of 70. The Lexus is the number 4, again, because it's a tie between the BMW and the Lexus. The Lexus got uh, 7 for the look, 7 for the engine performance, 4 for uh, the technology, 9 for uh, the seat comfort, 8 for the trunk space, 8 for the fuel efficiency, and 9 for the price. So it's 52 out of 70. The number two is the Maserati Ghibli, which got seven for the look, nine for the engine performance, seven for the tech, seven, nine for the seat comfort, 10 for the trunk space, six for the fuel efficiency, and five for the price. So it has a grand total of uh, 53 out of 70. The number one is the Mercedes. Seven for the look, seven for the engine performance, 10 for the tech, nine for the seat comfort, six for the trunk space, 10 for the fuel efficiency, and six for the price. So it has a 55 out of 70. I hope you enjoyed this top five. If you like this type of videos, please tell me in the comment. Don't forget to like, to subscribe, and uh, see you again. And uh, see you again in the next episode. Bye-bye.